Good morning and welcome to our second Google Plus Olympics Hangout. I'm Joe Ward from the New York Times. Today is diving day on the Hangout and joining us are two first-time Olympians, Cassidy Krug. Hi, Joe. Hi, Cassidy. Cassidy's birthday today, by the way, everybody. And Christian Ibsen. Hello. Hi, Christian. And joining them is their coach um, and assistant head coach of the uh, Olympic diving team, Rick Schiavone. Hi, Rick. Hello, Joe. Hi. Um, all the divers are convening in uh, Maryland this week um, for a little mini camp. Um, what do you guys hope to accomplish at the camp this week? Well, I'll start. Uh, I guess my picture isn't coming up. Sure it is. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> That's Christian. Are you talking, Christian? No, nope, you're up. Go, go ahead, Rick. You're good. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, well, what we really want to do is just bring the team together for the first time. And it's a b real important to get uh, these 12 individuals, I think there are 12, together as a team before we go off to London and start training for the, for the, for the games. So I think it's the beginning of just getting the team together, getting, getting them in the, with their roommates and, and doing some team bonding, some some publicity, some public relations, and just building, starting to build team cohesion. And I think that's a real important part, part of the, the, the training camp here and the training camp in Sheffield. But, uh, and we don't have, because it's an individual sport mostly, we don't have time to do this other than when we bring them together. Okay, and there are a lot of coaches that are, that are involved, and these guys, these uh, divers have all their own coaches. Um, is there ever any input from from other coaches when you get together like this, or is it mostly you know you do your you do your own coaching and and you listen to your own coaches? Um, I would say, oh <laughs> yeah, I would say uh, occasionally there's some input. Um, occasionally the coaches will all get together if we're having trouble on something and and all help together. But mostly at a at a camp like this where we're where we're really getting ready for a big meet. Um, it's input from your own coach. Yeah, I think, okay. it's, I think it's important to get input um, from other coaches, but I think it depends on what time it is because, I mean, really close to a meet that's coming up, I don't think you want to be focusing, want new corrections from a different coach all of a sudden. You want to be focusing on the things you've been focusing on for, like, months preparing. So, I mean, there's a, I think there's a certain time for it, but a lot of the times we just focus, we just work with our coach and we go to these kinds of meets. Okay, that makes sense. When are you guys heading to London? Uh, we're heading to London on Sunday, so Sunday. just a couple of days left. Are you staying at the uh, Olympic? Are you staying at the Athletes Village? Um, yeah, we're going to be in the Athletes Village for a couple of days, and then we're actually going to Sheffield for about a week um, to kind of get away from that, train somewhere else, clear our heads, and then we're going back to the Athletes Village for the Olympics. Yeah, I heard the Athletes Village is fun, but you don't get a whole lot of sleep there. It's kind of like a college dorm, I think. <laughs> uh, that's what I heard, but I'm <laughs> that's really That's probably why they're getting you out of there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's, let's talk about your competition a little bit. Of course, the Chinese are always a formidable foe, and um, who else besides the Chinese is, uh, is, is standing in your way? Um, well, at least for my event, there's a lot of good synchro teams. Russia has a great three-meter synchronized diving team. Uh, Mexico also has a good team. So for all the teams for synchronized diving, I feel are really good because the hard part about my event was qualifying to be in it. Um, there's only eight teams that are allowed to be in the synchronized event at, uh, for all synchronized events in London. And so and a lot of the other world meets are like 25 teams, and then they would cut. And so you needed to get a spot to be able to qualify for this meet. So um, I think all the teams are really good, but I think we have a chance to get a medal, definitely. Great. Um, yeah. The, the Chinese, they, they tend to practice together a lot, and it's more difficult in the United States to do that because you're all going to different universities and you're... Right. And your partners are sometimes in different cities. Do you do you think that's uh, do you think that holds you back at all, or um, is it sometimes a good thing that you get together and be fresh about it? Well, at least for uh, Troy and I, I think it, it has been somewhat difficult over the last couple of years because of me in school and he's been out of school and just training. But um, I have definitely wanted to go to school. That's always something that I've wanted to do. But this last quarter, I took this last quarter off from school so that I could focus more on synchronized diving um, with him. And I feel like it's paid off. And I feel like our training, we're training better than we ever have. That's good. Um, yeah. so talking about um, Troy, will, this is Troy Dumay, who's uh, his synchro partner. 
Um, he's going to be making his fourth Olympic appearance, and you at 19 are making your first one. Um, has he, what has he told you about what to expect for this uh, being in the spotlight? <laughs> he, <laughs> nothing positive, he's, believe me. <laughs> he's, kind of, he's told Troy, me. Troy sort of looks at the glass half empty most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> he's never been out of the village. He's never seen a play. He's never. <laughs> he's kind of told me to expect the unexpected more because it's. I mean, although it is another diving meet, there are a lot of things that are different. Security is different. There's just a lot of things that you need to kind of be ready for. And so, just kind of think of things like that. And um, he's helped me kind of deal with a lot of the pressure from some of the different world meets that I haven't been used to. So I think it will probably be the same here. Coach, how do you, um, this is your first Olympics too, how do you sort of keep the athletes focused when there's so many distractions? Uh, well, that's going to be an issue, but again, that's, I, I am a sports psychologist, I have a, my PhD from Stanford, so we deal with this a lot in, in my, my, my classes and stuff, so uh, I think once we get going, it's mostly just controlling the atmosphere. I mean, the, the Kathy and uh, Christian talked about uh, the technical knowledge when they're being coached at this meet, they want it from me and not from other coaches maybe. But I really think th that at this meet, you're basically just trying to re reduce, keep them calm, keep them focused. And the technical expertise has been done. The, the, the haze in the barn. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically, I just try to stay as far away from them as I can, keep them, uh, sit, sit real relaxed, act real relaxed, even though I'm not, and, and talk to them in a real <laughs> relaxed manner. And I think that they, they, they like that. Cass? Yeah, no, I, um, I really felt at trials, like, like what you were saying, we'd done the work, we, we'd done practice and practice and practice, and, and by the time you get up on the board, um, you just have to let what you know come out. And um, I think a really relaxed atmosphere helps. At the Olympics, I know that there's going to be probably distractions we haven't even thought of. Um, and I really, I want to really try to maintain a balance of like enjoying every minute of it, but you know, I know what we're there to do, and um, I want to focus on diving also. Yeah, Cass, you talked, you uh, brought up the um, trials, which you did very well at. You um, won this three-meter springboard, and you were ahead after each of the uh, rounds. But in 2008, um, when you were hoping to make the team, you didn't, and uh, and you quit diving after that. Can you talk about that part of your life a little bit? Yeah, um, 2008 was really tough because I, I got hurt leading up to it um, in February, actually at the Olympic test event in Beijing, I hurt my back and um, the solution to that was rest. So I had to rest for a couple months. I think um, going into the Olympics I probably only had like four to six weeks of training and so I just, I didn't have the dives behind me um, to really go there and do my best. and. Uh, so I got eighth at the actual trials, and then we had a camp, um, I think, three weeks later. And even in that amount of time, I improved a lot. So um, it was kind of hard, you know, being hurt and, and not being able to, to compete my best um, at trials. And you took a little bit of time off. What made you come back to diving? I did. Um, I took a little time off. I, I came back to Stanford. I, I got a job at Stanford Alumni Association. and. Um, I think in about the nine months that I was gone, I just it, it dawned on me more and more how much I missed it. Um, it's funny, Rick and I probably had dinner like once a month the whole time I was out of the sport, and uh, we never talked diving. We always talked, you know, life and how things were going, and um, it was really, you know, my decision that um, probably six or eight months later I, I really missed it and didn't feel like I'd reach my potential or reach the goals that I wanted to and, and really wanted to come back. Okay. Um, do you, are you a much different diver now than you were four years ago? I think... <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you answer that one, Coach? Yeah, Rick. Uh, she's, she is. And basically what we overlooked, she's much better. Physic she's a much more talented diver now than she was four years ago. She's improved her skills. She's improved her entries dramatically. So she's improved her consistency. The, the list at, at uh, World Cup, I mean, so at uh, Olympic trials, were three very, very good, consistent lists. She could have done one of those lists maybe four years ago, but she could never put three together. So she really has improved. 
otherwise, no, not a lot. She's still probably not much different than when she was 18. I mean, <laughs> she, has, she has trouble. Or she'll have a bad practice and it'll bother her, but mostly she comes in with this, that smile you're seeing now, and she works pretty hard. So basically her attitude has stayed basically the same, but uh, she has improved dramatically as a diver. Great. Um, Troy, how did, I'm sorry, um, Christian, how did you and Troy, how did you and Troy become partners? Um, we got paired up in 2009 by uh, the high performance director, Steve Foley. Yeah. Uh, we were paired up because we did similar dives and we both were really strong twisters, I think, and so we used two twisting optionals in our list of synchro dives and we had similar body types, similar styles, so yeah, we got paired up then and been diving synchro ever since. And you guys did really well in, um, in Rome, right? That year? Yeah, yeah, in Rome. Uh, that was the first big international meet that I've ever been to. It was my first world championship, so I didn't really know what to expect. And uh, going into the meet, I, I don't like to watch any of the other divers, so I was just hoping, like, oh, hopefully we can get into the final. Hopefully we can get into the top 12. That'd be really cool. And then I looked at the scoreboard after we had finished prelims, and we were in first place. We had beaten the Chinese because they, they made a mistake or something, so we were seated first going into finals. And then, then I got really nervous because I knew we had a chance to medal. Um, yeah, but then we got second, so it was a great experience. It was a really good first time at a world meet. It was awesome. Do you think that'll help you going in the Olympics? Um, the spotlight will be brighter, but at least you've been on the international stage before. Yeah, I think so. I, Troy and I have been competing um, at the international level for about four years now, and uh, I think that that international experience will help us. The international judges know us, and we've been a pretty formidable team for the past four years, so I think that will that can only help us going into the Olympic Games. Yeah. Um, the synchros is uh, uh, it's great to watch. You guys make it look easy, but um, you really have to get you have really have to get synchronized very early in the dive because you can't make any adjustments beyond that, right? Can you t can you talk about the, the the sort of how you get synchronized in the beginning? All right. There's a lot of work that goes into it. Um, but Troy and I, thankfully, are synchro came pretty naturally. We had similar hurdles going into it, like similar approaches walking down the board. And we just had to change our back presses when we were facing backwards to the board a little bit, but that was um, pretty much it. And for me, I do the counting. I count and I say one, two, three, go. And then after that first step, we need to make sure that we're, we have the same pace going down the board. But then once we get to the end of the board, pretty much all the work that we do for synchronize is our timing on the board. Because after that, we don't want to make huge adjustments for synchro in the air because that would just be impossible. Then we would miss our dives. And part of synchronized diving is the individual dive. We get scored on that too. So, Yeah. Um, one, thing, um, one thing I saw when I was down visiting um, some divers at Duke was um, mm -hmm. how intricate the steps on the board were. And, um, and uh, Kat, Cassie, maybe you can take me through how sort of how intricate the oscillation of the board is and how you have to manipulate that. Yeah, I have practiced tons and tons and tons of hurdles with Rick at Stanford. And I mean, at, at its base, it's just, um, you know, four steps, a hurdle jump, which is where one of your knees bends and you go up in the air and, and the dive. But um, it's, you really have to get the board moving. And, and the more you get it moving, the more it will give back to you and the higher you'll be able to jump and the more you'll be able to complete once you actually are doing the dive. So um, it is a simple thing that takes a lot of practice to, to make really good and really efficient. Great. What, did, what are the two of you, um, what are the other sports you might want to see while you're in London? I'm really excited to see gymnastics. Um, I was a gymnast until I was 15, and so I'm, I'm really hoping we get a chance to, to go and see some of that. Yeah, I really want to see the gymnastics. I think that'd be fun. Uh, just watching another acrobatic sport, kind of knowing everything that they're going through. Um, and I also, I, I want to try to see everything, because I'm done on August 1st, so I have some time to go and see different events. So I want to see maybe swimming. I want to watch water polo, because I know a lot of people on the team. Women's water polo, there's a lot of... Um, players at Stanford that are current Stanford players or have already graduated. So I think that'd be fun to go and watch and support. Coach, are you going to give yourself some time to enjoy London or is it going to be all about, all about the team members <laughs> while you're there? No, no. My, my, uh, my hobby is, is uh, Broadway musicals. So Cassidy has instruction to 
it's her job to get us tickets, and <laughs> we'll be seeing a few musicals, I'm sure, when we're there. Mm-hmm. Last time at the, when we were at World Cup, and six months ago we saw, uh, I took both Christian and Cassidy to a couple. So that's one of our things we're going to try to do outside the, the village. Inside the village, I, would, I don't think I'll have much time seeing. There's really just two official coaches for the team. But if I do, I'd like to see several other sports. I'd like to see women's soccer. So I'd probably want to see some track and field. So I'd, I hope to see some other venues, but I just don't know how much my time will be used up with the other, other members of the team, the organization, et cetera. Yeah. You, you both, you both uh, have um, been at an event at the London venue. Is that right? Yes. 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 So um, what's it like diving there? Is it a good place to dive? Oh, my God. <laughs> it's, a, it's a beautiful pool. It's an, the nicest pool I've ever seen. And plus, it's, it's architecturally strange because it, it towers mm-hmm. aren't supported stress-wise. They're, they're like a banana. Yeah. And it's just, it's amazing. It's the most beautiful pool I think I've ever been in. Yeah, I really don't think I've been at a facility like it. It's just so different. Right when we walked in, I think everyone's mouth just dropped. It was so beautiful. And it just looked like something that we had never seen before from a diving facility usually all diving facilities look pretty similar, but uh, and just everything about it is so nice. Yeah, the platforms are. <laughs> the uh, the platforms are really cool looking. It's like they they drop giant um, blocks of cement, and they're kind of like Rick said, banana shaped or water drop shaped or something, and they're all freestanding, and it's it's really striking to see it. How are the sight lines? I know that um, for divers, you know, you're always picking out spots on the ceiling or the water or things like that. Are the sight lines pretty good for you guys there? Yeah, it's really good. It's, uh, the pool's really well lit, which is, um, which is important. And I, I felt like it was really easy to see my spots there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it always takes a little bit adjusting to a new pool wherever we go, but we're going to have plenty of time to get acclimated with the facility. We're going to be there for a while. So um, I remember last time, I think everyone on the team had a pretty easy time picking up their spots and visual cues. So. Yeah, it will be good. Coach, will you guys be able to use that facility to train pretty much every day? Uh, this, uh, I think there's a conflict with swimming. isn't quite finished. I'm not qu- uh, so there's a slight conflict at the very beginning of our schedules. But we are scheduled in there every day. But, we, we, so, but we're going to leave part of the team up in Sheffield till I think, the 28th. So the, t- the early part of the schedule those athletes diving in the early part of the schedule come down on the 23rd and we'll be training at the, the, the site then. And the, many of the team, uh, some of the team members will stay up until the 28th. But, from, but we, we'll, be, we'll be allowed in the pool every day and we'll have training sessions every day. But, mm. you know, I, I don't think there's many conflicts other than swimming at the very beginning. Okay, we have a couple of questions from, uh, from our Google Plus page. Um, I think this is for Cassie. Cassie, um, Tyler C. Stevens wants to know, did Title IX, how did that um, open doors for you um, in, in diving and in probably in gymnastics as well? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm so thankful that I was able to go and dive at a university like Stanford. It's, um, it, it was probably the most amazing four years of my life, and um, I think Title IX really helped to open the door for me and for a lot of women's sports. So um, I, I love those years, and um, yeah, it's been amazing. Um, Jen Lambert has a question. Um, maybe you could take this, Christian. Um, is there ever a sense of fear when you're uh, about ready to dive? Definitely. There <laughs> is a sense of fear. Um, Always. Uh, yeah, <laughs> especially during competition. I feel like that's one of the things that both Cassie and I and Coach work on is um, fear in the meet. I mean, there isn't really that much fear during practice for me, at least. Um, but when we get into the meet, it's just the fear of things like, oh, maybe this could go wrong. What happens if I do this? Just like tons of thoughts that go into your head that aren't good. So, I, And I think that causes a lot of fear. Um, yeah, so it's definitely pretty scary. But I had a ton of fear when I used to dive 10-meter platform. And right now, <laughs> I mean, that, that was fear every practice that I practiced that. So I'm happy I'm on the 3-meter. There's less fear there. <laughs> That's good. Coach, um, how, is, how is diving doing in, in the United States? Um, are there a lot of young kids coming up? How is, how is, the, uh, how is diving doing? Well, I'd say diving in the U.S. is getting better. It, uh, it's still, the problem isn't that the United States isn't getting better. It's a problem the rest of the world is getting real good too, also. 
It used to be we just competed with the Chinese, and now we're seeing that the, the European countries are getting stronger. Malaysia is real strong. Mexico has something like eight training centers. So the rest of the world, diving is really, really growing. So we have to keep up. And we're doing a good job. We've got a great base. We've got some good age groupers. And with our new technical director, who's just been in about two years now, he's starting to form that, the, the, the good educational pyramid that I think we need to, to, start, to stay competitive with the rest of the world. Great. Um, are there a lot of family and friends coming over to watch you, and do you have to deal with that, or are you letting somebody else deal with those, those arrangements? <laughs> Cassie? Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I have, um, well, my parents are both going to be there. They're actually going to be um, working for NBC there. Uh, they, they're, both, they're both coaches, right? Yeah, they're both coaches, and um, my mom's kind of a statistician for NBC, so she'll, sh she'll sit with um, the commentators and kind of help them find information about the divers. Um, so they'll be there, and I have some other friends from the Stanford diving team, um, some other alums from my years that are going to come over and watch too. So I think it'll be really fun. Christian, yeah, friends, for, family? For me, um, at this meet, it's just going to be my parents and my sister, and I think maybe some other friends that are coming, they're going to try to come. There is, it, it's a process right now, but right now guaranteed it's my parents and my sister. Um, but at the trials, it was very different. There were about 80 family members <laughs> that came I was that. there, I remember. Yeah, there were a lot of people there. So um, it will be different this time. But, I mean, it was great at the trials having all of them there. I felt like I had a great support team. But, um, and it will be nice having my parents and my sister at this meet, too. Coach, are you going it alone, or is there some family no, and friends coming? No, I'm, I'm going alone. But we do have, as Cassidy said, a lot of Stanford followers. We have a lot of ex-divers that are coming over and, so it should be a family affair for me also. Great. Um, so we have another reader question. Um, what, is your, what, what are your uh, specific goals once, once your diving careers are over? Might be, maybe you have longer to wait, Christian, than Cassie does. But um, what, is, what, do you, what do you plan on doing beyond diving? Um, well, my, uh, my career is going to be over after this Olympics. I've loved every minute of it, but... Um, I think it'll be time to move on and explore something else in life. Uh, what that is exactly, I'm not entirely sure yet. Um, I love writing; I always have. So um, I'm looking into different career paths that might that I might be able to do that. But um, I'm kind of going to focus on enjoying every minute of this month, and then kind of figure out the rest of my life after that. Yeah, for me, I don't know at all. I really need to start thinking about it. I'm going to think about it after this is all done, but I've only done two quarters of my freshman year at Stanford so far. So I want to go back uh, to school. I'm so excited to go back to school. It was really a tough decision for me to take that last quarter off from school, but I'm really happy I did. It would have just been a lot to deal with with all the traveling, but um, I want to go back and figure out what my major is going to be and uh, just get back into school and figure it all out. Super excited. Yeah. It's kind of easy to to realize how Cassie got into this, um, this because her parents were both uh, coaches. Um, your dad's a coach at the University of Pitt, is that right? Yeah, University of Pittsburgh. Yeah, and your mother's a coach. Uh, your mother's a coach at um, the Pitt, the Pitt Aquatic. Uh, yeah, yeah, they they both coach the club team, the Pitt Aquatic Club, and mm -hmm. my mom coaches some other area high schools. So um, I guess you could say I kind of grew up at the pool. Um, Do you remember the first time you went off the board? <laughs> I remember, I think I was going off the board almost before I could swim. They would have people down there to catch me, of course, but uh, it was pretty young. Christian, how about you? How would you get started in diving? Um, I did gymnastics for about a month when I was younger. My parents just signed me up for gymnastics class, and uh, it was going pretty well, and I was getting moved up into age groups with kids that I didn't really feel comfortable with. I was a super shy young kid, and I was, I started, I was about six at the time, and I was training with people that were nine and ten. So I got nervous and stopped and tried swimming, but then I got bored going back and forth. So I wanted something extra, so then they kind of put the two sports together and found diving. Excellent. Well, this has been, uh, this has been fun for us. I hope it was fun for you. Um, yeah. We're out of time, um, and so we're going to sign off now. But um, thank you so much, and good luck, and have a great time in London. Uh, maybe thank I'll you. see you over there. Um, uh, we have... Uh, more Hangouts coming, uh, one tomorrow and more next week, and you can find that schedule on uh, nytimes.com slash Olympics. Thanks for joining us at the Hangout. Thank, Thank you, Joe. Joe. Thank you.